Hello, everyone. It's Teacher Grant coming to you from the wonderful world of Web Talk. Um, the video you're about to see is a video about American pronunciation. It is my take on American pronunciation, on how we speak, how we act, how we say other words. So please don't take everything I'm saying literally. Everybody will have their own way of teaching and I have my own way. They'll have their own way. No way is right, no way is wrong. We all have our own way of learning and teaching. Thank you everyone, enjoy the video. Teacher Grant. Hi. Oh, there, there's Sorry Cam talking. I speak English not well. Have you seen my name on the list yet? Yes, yes, you're, you're perfect. You're awesome. <laughs> Your number is your number 43 on the list. I am so proud of everyone who followed very well. Thank you, and, teacher. Yeah, thank you, you guys. Um, so I think we can go ahead and begin. It's been about 10 minutes now. And we have how many people in this room? Uh, 14. Uh, okay, 14 people. Awesome. So what I'm going to kind of talk to you guys about is not really about the accent, it's more about how Americans speak and how it differs from different, uh, from the UK. Um, so I'm gonna kind of go through some common phrases that are spoken and kind of give you an idea on how the American take of it is. So um, that's what I'm going to kind of go through. And then I have a small video that I found online that kind of uh, talk about it. So when we're, when Americans are speaking English, um, a lot of words are blended together. Okay. They're blended. So the way I'm speaking is one word at a time. And even when I just said that at a time, in, in, in the UK, they might stress each word at a time. But as you can tell, as an American, we kind of blend that phrase at a time. So I'm gonna show you guys something here on the whiteboard, right? So we have the, fr the, 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 the phrase kind of um, at a time, right? So I just say one word at a time, right? So if you're speaking one, if you're speaking this sentence, one with each word, it's one word at a time. But if you're speaking it naturally, it would be one word at a time. So the, the stress is basically one word, right? And at a time is like blended together. So it's at a time, at a time, at a time. So it almost sounds like we're saying, it almost sounds like that. It almost sounds, it's not spelt like that, but it almost sounds like at a time. We speak each word, one word at a time. So when Americans are speaking, they don't necessarily stress each word. They ne don't necessarily stress each word. So, uh, it's, it's, it's just more natural and it's not natural for me to speak like this to my friends. It's, it's basically all, it's kind of like music. When you're playing music, the music continues to, con it continues to go. It's blending. You know, when you have music notes, right? You got music notes, you know. Um, speaking a language is kind of like reading music, right? 
as you can tell, when you see notes like this, you don't pause, it continues to flow. You know, you continue, it continues, it continues, it continues, and goes on and on and on and on. So, um, so the examples I wanna kinda give you, um, stop the screen here. So, um, for example, there's the sentence, this is for work, right? This is for work, but, and for Americans, we won't uh, stress each word, okay? This, and then I'm gonna change the color here. <clears throat> This is for uh, work. Okay, now you can notice here that these are highlighted in green for a reason. So when you're speaking it, each word, right? This is for work. Now, if you want to speak it naturally and sound more American or sound more natural, more authentic, you know, think about your own native tongue. You don't necessarily speak Korean one word at a time. And correct me if I'm wrong, or in Thailand or in Vietnam, they're not speaking one word at a time. They're blending the words together. So this is for work so is and for is is work is work is work is work is for is work or does that kind of make sense to you you see the words in green yeah yeah so yeah so we don't say this is for work we would say this is for work. The is okay. and for is, is for. So, um, what I'd like to do, Ori, do you want to read that sentence for me? This is, this is for work. Yeah. Now, when you're saying it, the is and for, you don't necessarily have to go is for. You can say, this is for work. This is for work. So isn't for, like, is for, is for, is for. It almost sounds like this, Ori. It almost sounds like that, right? It sounds like is for is one word, right? All right, I see everyone here. Thank you for joining. <laughs> All right, so um, would somebody like to practice that sentence? and try to speak it in a natural way. Uh, I heard Ori practice. I can see a hand up. Um, I can't necessarily see everyone's hand if they want to try. Okay, Kim, go for it. Go for it. Yes, teacher. Yes, this go for is it. more work. Okay. And it's very good. Work. Yeah, yeah, very good. Perfect, perfect. The first time you were speaking it slowly, one word, right? And then you actually made it more natural. Ah, this is poor work. Very good, very good. Good job. Uh, I The next person, um, uh, Thoi, boy, boy, uh, the person, I'm going to lower your hand, okay? You can speak, all right? Uh, you had your hand up, so you can speak, yes. Go for it. Anh muốn đọc giơ tay lên kìa, thầy gọi I'm sorry, come again uh, This is for work per Good, good, good This is for work As you notice the way you said it, it was blending it together You weren't speaking it each, You weren't speaking each word, right? This, this is for work, very good, very good Okay all right, so um, I'm gonna go on to the next uh, phrase that I kind of want to talk about. Um, 
the way that we speak the word the, the. And the is kind of like, uh, it goes immediately to the next word, right? So for example, we say, the cat is black, right? If you're speaking each word one by one, the cat is black, right? But the is more like the, 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 the. It's, it's very light, it's unstressed. So it's the cat is black, the cat is black, the cat is black, or the bird is blue, the bird is blue, or the most uh, the bird is blue, the cat is black, uh, the, um, the school is closed, the school is closed. So the is more like the, it's very light, it's very light, it's, it's, I guess they call it a schwa. Teacher Tim, I was watching a video about this, I didn't even know this term existed for Americans, but you know what a schwa is, or schwa, when they say schwa? Or, I don't know, another teacher. Okay. So, when you're saying the word the, it's more likely just to kind of be blended together with the next word. So it's, uh, the school is closed, uh, or the best parts of life are blah, 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 you know? So that's kind of what I want to talk about with the word the, right? And then I also want to stress uh, on contractions, right? You got, um, Ori, do you know what a contraction is? Do you know what a contraction is? Yeah. Yeah. So what's an example of a contraction? Like what word? For example, uh, Right, I have. I would. Now, when we're speaking, so we never, it's very rare that we will naturally say, ah, I am going to, the, I am going to the store. When we're naturally speaking, we're immediately using the contraction. If I'm talking to Teacher Tim or Teacher Gary or Teacher John or Teacher Michael, I'm not going to say, I am going to the store. It's always most likely going to be, I'm. I'm going to the store. So it's, I'm, 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 I'm. I'm just very fast. I, I, uh, yeah, I, exactly, exactly. I, I, I'm I, I, with I'm, the M there. You gotta have a little light M. I'm going to the store. I'm going to school. I'm going to store. Yeah. I'm going to store. Yeah, or I'm going to school, or I'm going outside, or I'm blah 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 blah. So. We, it's very rare that we'll say, I am going to the store, or I am going to school, or I am going to sleep. We don't necessarily speak that, you know. So we'll just say, I'm going to sleep, I'm waking up, I'm taking a shower, I'm blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah. Very, this will be very interesting for you, Jenny. So as you notice, the difference between Teacher John's class and my class is that mostly with the UK, they want to stress everything. So they want to stress each word to perfection. <laughs> maybe teacher, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit. Maybe it's not so much like that. Uh, wow. I'm happy to see a lot of people here listening in. So um, I would like to open it up and hear some practicing. If you'd like to practice the phrase, I am, 
I have, oh yeah, so really quickly, I have is always I've. I've always had a dream to travel around the world. Uh, um, I have, <laughs> um, yes, I would, right? So like, I'd like to go to the market. I'd like to go outside. Is the concern. I would. I would like to go outside. But naturally, we're just saying the contraction. So I, 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 right? Uh -huh. So compared to how, we, and this is naturally speaking, this is not lazy English. This is how we speak to each other. And even people like the president or professional speeches, this is the way they talk. And uh, I wanted to show you guys another uh, another example, um, which is um, ah. So another example. These are very these are the most common words we will use, and how they're naturally spoken, right? Like kind of, or sort of, kind of, sort of turns into kind of, sort of. So you have a very light, so it's a very short of, of, of. So then it's not of, it's of, of. It's a very short note. Kind of like in music, it's like a very short note. It's kind of boop, 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 boop. So it's like, ah, I kind of like to go there, or I sort of want to do that. You know? Ah, uh, want to, want to is another one. Want to, as you can hear the sentence, I kind of want to do that. Now, I'm going to write that out for you. Um, I kind of want to do that. Uh, let me write that out. I kind of want to do that. So, I want you guys to listen to how I say that sentence and uh, wait a moment. Okay, I'll come. I'll come to you in a moment. So, when I say the sentence, can you guys tell me which words are stressed and which words are not stressed? So, for example, I'm gonna speak this here. Uh, I kind of want to do that today. Or I should write today. I kind of want to do that today. I kind of want to do that today. So, kind of, right? Uh, I'm going to write an arrow here. Kind of. Oops, sorry. And want to. So everything is pretty much blended in the sentence. Um, so uh, by a show of hands, uh, I'm gonna, ah, soy bay, uh, you can uh, try to read that sentence. Okay, and Kim, I'll come back, I'll come to you in a moment. So soy boy, you can read that sentence or have a question. I kind of want to do that today. I yeah, kind of want to do that kind of, yeah. So when you're speaking it, when we're naturally speaking, there's a lot of words that are not stressed. You know, if you're stressing each accident. word, it just sounds strange. If we go, I kind of want to do that. Yeah, but I'll never say I it. Kind, I kind of want to do that today. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's very, that's very natural. I kind of want to do that today. Uh, Kim, you want to try? I kind of want to do that today. Much better. Very good. Very good. Uh, uh, Kim, Kim. Yes. Teacher. Go for it. Go for it. Yes. A kind of want to do that and a kind of want to do that. Yeah. I kind of want to do that today. I kind of want to do that today. Yeah. 
So the first time when you said it, you're speaking each word at a time. So yeah. the second time you did much better. So I kind of want to do that. Uh, Jessica, go for it, Jessica. Jessica, can you hear me? Can you unmute yourself? Uh, okay, I kind of want to do that today. Yeah, exactly. I kind of want to do that today. Um, I kind of want to do that today. Yeah, very good, very good, very good. All right, uh, Sarah, go for it. I kind of what to do that today. I kind of what to do that today. Yes, much better. The first time you did one word, and the second yeah. time you were much more natural. All right, um, Ori, I'll get to you in a moment, okay? Uh, okay, go for it, Jenny. Go for it, Jenny. Or if you have a question. Um, I kind of want to do it today. I'll, I kind of want to do that today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, that's very good. It's very good. Very natural. It doesn't sound like you're a robot. I think sometimes when you look, when some teachers are teaching a pronunciation, they're literally like, I kind of want to do, but we don't speak like that. And and correct me if I'm wrong, Jenny, when you're speaking Vietnamese, do you speak one word at a time or do you blend your words together? In, in Vietnamese language, is um, we kind of have to say every single word because uh, but when I hear you speak it maybe it's because I don't speak it it sounds like you're blending it together I am basically like, um I'm not sure about it but uh, normally in the Vietnamese language it has no each word had only one sound one syllabus so uh, people kind of have to say it uh, in every word even if you speak slowly it's okay but of course, if, uh, if you speak faster, it, it will be more natural. But when you speak faster, the words aren't, uh, how to say, it? every word is not stressed, right? That's right, right. Yeah. That's what I mean. So in Vietnamese, there are Vietnamese words that are stressed and there are Vietnamese words that are not stressed. So that's basically what I was trying to compare it to. So yes, yes, yes. Are, I mean, so technically, I am saying every single word in that sentence, but yes. um, it's every word is not stressed. All right, I'm gonna show you guys another. Uh, I see your hand, Ori. Go for it. You can do it really quickly, buddy. You can you can speak because you're the only other hand. Ori, you can speak, and then uh, we have ten minutes, and we will come back in with the same. Um, I kind of want to do that today. Good, good. If you say the uh, kind of the want to a little faster, it will be more it will be more natural. I uh, kind of want to do that today. Kind of want to do that today. I hear your mother trying to. So, but very good though, Ori. Very good, very good. Uh, and let's see. Wait, because you know, Ori. Yeah. Very good, very good. Good job. Uh, let's look at another uh, one really quickly here. And uh, so, um, ah, here is another sentence. Okay. Uh, and then after we go through the sentence, uh, After we do this sentence, we'll come back into the class. Uh, okay, so uh, by a show of hands, um, who could tell me which words are stressed and which words are not stressed? Who could guess which words are stressed and which words are not stressed? So I'm not gonna say that word of the sentence. But if somebody wants to try to say it, so hello everyone, wow, look at a whole group of friends. Hello, <laughs> all your friends are there, Jessica, I see. 
So um, I'm going to go ahead and say it because we're about uh, seven minutes and then we'll come back into the class. So, so I'm going to speak one word at a time, right? So I know how to do it. I know how to do it. So uh, let's look at hands. Uh, let's go to uh, ho, uh, how hoy. Will the person I lower the hand and unmute, please uh, speak. I can't. Uh, I'm going to put you on this. Yeah. Go. I know how to do that. Very good. Very good. Very good. Um, the only part I would say to not stress so much is how to do it. You did fine. Do it. How to. Yeah. So how, how to do it. How to do it. How to do it. So the stress. How to do it. Yeah. So the uh, the, the unstress is kind of like, uh, it's almost like how to, right? Instead of how to, right? So I know how to do that. Or I know how to do it. I know how to do it. I know how to do it. So, it, like I said, it's like playing music. If you guys play the piano, you continue to play the piano. You don't stop the music. You continue. You continue. You have one hand here, one hand here. You continue. I know how to do that. All right, Jessica, go for it. I know how to do it. Good. I know how to do it. Yeah, very good, very good. I know how to do it. Very good, very good. Okay, um, let's see. So I know it's not a hot time. Soy boy, uh, go for it. Go for it, soy boy. You can try. I know how to do it. Okay, not bad, not bad. But again, just uh, you don't have to stress the how to. I know how to do that. Or I'm sorry, how to do it. <laughs> Can you read my own sentence? I know how to do it. I know how to do it. I know how to do it. Yeah, so I know how, how to, to do it. sounds like how to, how to, how to. It's hard for me to kind of give you the no. phonetics there because it's so naturally spoken. I don't think about it too much. I was like, how to, how to, how to, how to. You know, it sounds strange when you hear it by itself. So how to sounds like how to, how to, how to, how to. Uh, I see a lot of chats. Uh, I'm not looking at chats. So uh, I see. Uh, Teacher Tim is. Uh, thank you, Tim, for uh, 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 messaging everyone. Yeah, Jeems. I don't know why. I thought you were Jeems. I don't, you should change your name to Jeems. <laughs> uh, I thought you were Jeems. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Some, I don't know why your mother put Ori for you. I know how to do it. Yeah. You should teach your mother how to change your name. I, I thought you were Jeems. I don't know why I kept saying Ori. I looked at you. I was like, I know who this kid is. <laughs> okay. Um... So I'm going to kind of show you guys a small video. Hopefully the video will work in the connection. I'm not sure if it will or not, but uh, so this is going to be the word, the phrase for the, for the, right? For the, for the rest of your life or for the rest of the school year or um, for the rest of the night, you know, for the is not for the, it ends up being for the, and we kind of call it fast English and not to be mistaken by um, lazy yeah, yeah. English. Uh, and the only person that can really vouch, I know teacher Tim's doing a lot of behind the scenes work is the stress on how fast English is not lazy English. If Teacher Tim has a moment to, to give some two cents about that, uh, about how we are all naturally speaking. 
So I wanted to show you guys this clip here. Hey, uh, Grant. We have two minutes, so I'm gonna show you guys the clip, and then good, it would pass in. I'd like everyone to. Actually, Teacher Grant, it's wonderful to hear you talk about these shortcuts that is natural in America. You know, it's it's nice even for Teacher Tim to be a part of this and listen again. It's been so long. And isn't it isn't it amazing that like we don't even think about it as fast English or or exactly. uh, noisy English as other people want to call it. It's just the way. You see, even what I just said, just the way. Right, just the way it sounds <laughs> yes. like they, it's blended together, and the the biggest analogy I can think of is like playing the piano. When you're playing the piano, you never stop; you continue the music. And so, the, the, what I'm trying, what I'm stressing on in this class is that everyone's like, for the rest of the night. But if they want to stress on, want to speak naturally, then. To be honest, I'm doing it wrong because we're, or maybe we're doing it wrong because we're so stressed on one word, right? That we don't even think about it because when maybe when you're speaking to your wife's parents, you're speaking slow or to other students in Thailand, and but when you speak to your your friends, your family, you immediately go back into this is the way I'm gonna talk. And you don't even think that you're blending what you're doing. So, um, hey you guys, I'm gonna end this class, but everybody please come back in. And then I'm gonna show you guys a video of even our own president who may speak in this fast English method. So I'm gonna end the class right now. And everybody please come back in and okay. And I'll see everybody shortly, all right? Okay. Yes, teacher. Right. I'll see everybody shoot soon. Just everybody come back in. I'll wait about one more minute, and then we'll continue. And then so, um, what I wanna show you guys is some clips about using the phrase, for the, for the. So for the, when we're speaking is uh, basically for the, 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 not for the, for the, for the rest of, for the rest of our lives, uh, for the rest of the night, uh, for the rest of the day, for the rest of the class. For the ends up being for the. So I'm gonna show you guys. We may have people coming in, but I'm gonna show you guys um, that clip here. Um, okay. Um, I don't wanna. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys this um, clip here. Here we go. Uh... Speeches where the speakers use this reduction. We've got to keep fighting for the dignity of every veteran. Okay, we got to keep fighting for the dignity of everybody, right? Now, if you listen to him, this is our this is the American president, right? This is what we considered lazy English or fast English. He did not say for the. It said he said for that for that for that for that. So listen again. Did you hear the reduction? For the fighting for the dignity of every veteran. Let's listen again. We've got to keep fighting for the dignity of every veteran. For the for the for the for the. So do you hear that? For the for the for the for the. For the it's very very lightly stressed. For the 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 
It's very lightly stressed. For the dignity of every veteran. We've got to keep fighting for the dignity of every veteran. And that's the President of the United States. Now, here's another one. Or do you want me to hire the best person for the job? You want to hire the best person for the job, for the job, for the job, for the, 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 for the job, for the job. Do you want to hire the best person for the job? Best person for the job, for the, for the. Or do you want me to hire the best person for the job? For the job. Do you hear that? So these are people who are in a professional setting speaking naturally. So it's not for the job. She's not saying we want to hire the best person for the job. It's for the, 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 for the. So, so strange, right, James? When you hear that kind of lazy English or that fast English. For the, for the, for the, for the, for the job. Or do you want me to hire the best person for the job? Okay, here are three more. Teach them to yearn for the vast and endless sea. For the, for the, for the, for the, for the vast and endless sea. You hear that? For the, for the, for the, for the, for the, for the, for the. She's saying it very fast, very natural. And this is the way that we are naturally speaking. It's not lazy. It's not fast. It's just the way that we naturally will speak that phrase. So as simple as saying the word for the, for the, but when I'm speaking to you guys as, a, as English learners, I will say, ah, for the rest of the class, we're going to do this. But if I'm speaking to my friends, ah, I would say, hey, you guys, uh, what do you want to do for the rest of the night? For the rest of the night, for the rest of the night, for the rest of the night. What do you want to do for the rest of the day? What do you want to do for the blah, 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 blah. So it's very, very naturally spoken like that. Teach them to yearn for the vast and endless sea. But 150, you can read over and over for the rest of your life. For the rest of your life, 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 for the rest of your life. As you can tell, for the is for the, 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 for the rest of your life. But 150, you can read over and over for the rest of your life. They do fill certain gaps in skills and knowledge that uh, are good for the overall economy. For good for the overall economy. So there's some vocabulary that you might not understand. But she's basically saying something that's good for the <laughs> for the. So again, this is Hillary Clinton speaking the way she's saying for the overall economy. For the for the for the for the for the overall economy, they do fill certain gaps in skills and knowledge that uh, are good for the overall economy. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing. Uh, so as you guys can see, when we're speaking these simple phrases, not phrases, these simple words, right? We're speaking them in a completely different manner. So for the, for the, for the, for the, for the, for the. We'll never speak to our friends and say, ah, for the rest of the night. Um, for the job. We're, we're not we're gonna stress those words um, as we're talk as we're you know so um, let me see here um, what else I wanted to talk about uh, it looks like maybe they didn't know they could come back in um, give me a moment you guys I want to look at my notes. Okay, so um, okay, so another one. Ah, 
Okay, so another um, common thing is using the word. <laughs> it's gonna be sound really funny, right? So using the word in, 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 I n. As simple as saying the word in, I n. Right. So when you're saying the word in, in. That's actually not as it's not stressed, right? Um. So. You can say something like, <clears throat> he's in love, right? So it will more likely sound like in, right? In, 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 he's in love, he's in love, he's in love. Or she's in a hurry, she's in a hurry. Hurry. She's in a hurry. So who could say the sentence and name the unstressed, um, the, un, the word doesn't need to be stressed. So who could read this sentence, uh, she's in a hurry? So I can see a hand up. James, you can try. Uh, okay, Kim, go ahead, Kim. Kim, yeah. go for it. She is in a hurry and she's in a hurry. Yes, the second time is perfect. She's in a hurry, she's in a hurry. So a we hurry. don't, uh, we, we can write it, but it's naturally, we won't say she is. 90% of the time, we're going to just be stressing on the contraction. She's in a hurry. She's in a hurry. He's she's in love. In she's going to be late to work. Or, you know, uh, she's in a hurry. She's going to be late to work. Going to be, going to be, going to be, going to be. You know, even that phrase, going to be, going to be, going to be, is even like blended together. Um, Let's see here, other... Um, here's another one. Uh, we might end the second class a little early, but I do want to see it for you guys practice. Uh, this sentence here. I'll take one of all of them. All of them, all of them, all of them, all of them. All of them. I want all of them. All of them. All of them. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> I'm even tongue twisting myself here. So I'll take one of all of them. So all of them becomes all of them. All of them. All of them. All of them. So again, you got. I'll t I'll take one. Take one is stress, right? I'll take one of all of them. All of them. All of them. And let's see here, other notes. Okay, so those are kind of the notes that I had. So uh, we talked kind of a lot of stuff. Um, so the, the, to kind of like, uh, to recap. I am going to sleep. Yeah, I'm going to sleep. So I am becomes I'm. I'm going to sleep. I'm going, I'm to, going to sleep. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to sleep. Uh, Kim, what about I would like to go to the market? I could like to go to the market and go to go to buy gota gota. I no, could like go. I'd, I, that I would, I'd like to go to the market. I'd like to go to the market. I'd like to go to my market. Go to the market. Yeah, and if you're trying to kind of mix those words together or like blend them together, go to the, yeah. Go to the, go to the, go to the. Again, if you're saying one word at a time, that's fine. It's just going to sound strange when you're naturally having a conversation. Uh, Sarah, you want to try I Have Been Wanting to see that movie? 
Yes, yeah, I've been waiting to see that movie. Yeah, waiting to see that. Waiting is okay too. Yeah, waiting, watching, waiting. Yeah, but both are fine. Waiting, wanting, uh, wanting. I mean, yeah. So, um, so for example, now the way you would naturally speak them would be, I'm going to sleep. Uh, I'd like to go to the market. Um, I've been waiting. Wanting to see that movie. Okay. Oops, sorry, you guys. Typo. I've been waiting, wanting to see that movie. <clears throat> so again, those are kind of the ways that we would be naturally speaking, right? Um, the other thing. Ah, for we are, we are, right? We are. We are going to the park and then to the market, right? So we are ends up being weird. We're, 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 we're. It's very, we're going to the park and then to the market. We're, 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 we're. So again, we're not stressing we are going to the market. It's just we're going to the market. We're going to the market today. And then we might go to the park. And there's so many other things I can talk to you guys about. I just don't want to like over. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I don't want to say too much, but if you notice the way that Americans speak, they speak in a very blended kind of tone where a lot of, they call it a schwa. So it's a very light tone. So you're still saying the words, you're still saying them, but just in a very light tone way. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to sleep. I'd like to go to the market. So they're very shortened in the tone. They're not so stressed on on a robotic speed like, I am going to sleep. I would like to go to the market. Uh, or I'm, 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 and it just being I'm, 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 I'm. Because if you think about it, I'm, I'm, we're not stressing that I'm, mm -mm. I'm, 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 I'm going to sleep. I'm going to sleep. I've, I've, I've been wanting to see that movie. I've been waiting to see that movie. Um, okay. Um, it's more like I've, 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 I've. So it's very kind of fast. So I gotta call it fast English. The method of us speaking is speaking in a fast method, just like your own native tongue. Yeah. You guys can even, when you're meeting, practice these words and keep those, keep practicing that, the, the, um, the flow, the flow of those sentences. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to sleep. I'd like to go to the market. I'd like to go to the market. Go to that, go to that, go to. A lot of the words are not as, st as stressed as uh, other words are. All right, I'm going to end this a little early. Um, I'm going to open it up for those who want to try to practice uh, speaking some phrases or just speak naturally. Uh, tell me a story about something. And OK, so I'm going to open it up. Anybody can say anything about anything. Kim, go for it. Teacher? Yes. Teacher? Yes. Mm, going to, going to can turn into gonna, gonna. Pardon? 
going to going to can turn into Guana Biku, please. Going to the going to can turn can turn into Guana. Not necessarily like go a lot. It's just I'm going to go. Go to that, go to that, go to that. Don't 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 think too much about it. It's more about just blowing the sentence. You can say go to the but that's speaking slowly, just speed it up. All you're basically doing when you're reading the sentence is speeding it up. I would I would as I'd like to go to the market. You know, when you're speaking English for the first time, you're speaking the sentence slowly. And all you're basically doing is speeding it up. You're still saying, I'd like to go to the market, but I'll speak it naturally. I'd like to go to the market. Now there's technically a difference. So I'd like to go to the market. I'd like to go to the market. So don't think about, ah, does it sound like that? Does it sound like this? Just, it's just basically the pace of how you're speaking. I mean, uh, for example, Kim, if uh, you taught me how to say, how are you in Vietnamese, right? You can say it slowly, but in, in okay, for example, Kim, how do you say, how are you in, in Vietnamese? How do you say, how are you in Vietnamese? I am a person Vietnamese. Oh, are you Vietnamese or no? Where are you from? I come from Vietnamese. Ah, how do you say, how are you in Vietnamese? How do you say, how are you? How are you? In Vietnamese, how do you say that in your native tongue? In your native tongue, how do you say, how are you? How are you? Um, uh, Seth? Um, James, okay. James, James. How do you say, how are you in Vietnamese? Seven? How do you say, how are you in Vietnamese? Eight, eight, oh. Uh, I, in your native tongue, James, how do you say, how are you? Uh, that's what I'm saying. Yes, how, how do you say, how are you in Vietnamese? Sorry, boy, I'm trying to unmute you. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm um, fine. Yeah. Okay. yeah bye. So, so, so when you're saying slowly, you'll say um fine. When you're teaching the word, right? Um fine. Um fine. Um fine. But when you're when you're speaking it fast, it will sound the same but different, right? When you say that phrase fast, it will sound stressed and unstressed. If I said to you, how do you say? How are you doing today? I'm trying to give a longer sentence in Vietnamese. He said, "How? Uh, what are you going? Okay, for example, you can say, what are you going to do today in Vietnamese? If you spoke it slowly, you're going to hear all the words. But if you speak it naturally and fast, you're going to hear stressed and unstressed, right? Does that make sense? Kim, Thai. James, does that make sense? I'm fine. Yeah. No, I mean, James, do you understand what I'm saying, buddy? Like, if you speak Vietnamese, ah, uh, Kim, thank you. So, ah, uh, is that how to say, how are you? So, Vong, I can't read Vietnamese. Uh, so, James, what I'm saying to everybody, is when you speak Vietnamese to me, you want if you teach me how to say something in Vietnamese, you will speak slowly to me. 
But if you speak Vietnamese to your mother, you will speak fast and natural. Do you understand what I'm saying? Kimberly, the same with you. Uh, if you're speaking, if you're teaching me Vietnamese, you'll speak slowly, right? And I'll hear every single word. Uh, but if you speak to your mother, father, aunt, uncle, friend, you're going to speak it fast. So really, my point is when you want to say something and you're learning the first time, you can say, ah, I have, I've been waiting to see that movie you know, five years, two years, five years, depending where you're at and your level, you'll go, ah, I've been wanting to see that movie. You're saying the same thing. You're just not stressing every word. You will always say the same sentence. But you won't be stressing every word. Does that make sense? You will always speak the same sentence. But you will not always rest every single word so every every single word will not always be stressed it will have a different sound like you know like instead of we're going to the park turns into we're going to the park we're we're, we're. it's very lightly stressed so uh hi johnny Okay. All right, you guys. So um, I'm going to end it with this now. Anyone else want to say anything? James, do you want to say anything? Anything to say? Susie, I know it's listening, maybe. Sarah, Zoe, you guys want to say anything? Thank you, sir. It was a wonderful class. I like American accent. Yeah. And the one thing I want to stress, no pun intended, is that don't literally think about how that stressed or unstressed word is is uh, is spoken. It's just basically the speed that you're speaking. Just as you would in any native language, whether it's Vietnamese, Chinese, Japanese, uh, Spanish, it's all about the speed. So basically you're speaking Vietnamese You'll teach me very slowly. I'll learn very slowly. You'll speak every single word slowly. But if you're speaking to your best friend, you're not going to go blah, 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 blah. It's going to sound like blah, 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 blah. You know what? It, does yeah. that make sense, Sarah? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know. You, you could tell your friend, ah, I'm going to go to the market today and then I have to go to work and I've got to pick up my kids today. Do you hear how fast I spoke that in English, right? Ah, I got to yeah. go to the park today, then I'll go to the market, then I got to pick my kids up after school, and then we're going to go home, and I'm going to get dinner ready. Now, there's a difference between saying that to a friend and to a student. I'm going... hàng xe 49 C0713, Hello, Johnny. Hi. Can we help you? Okay, so James, thank you for joining. You are awesome coming to my class. Thank you so much for helping me. You were an awesome student. Very good job today. And I know we will have a class today. Um, and I'll be make sure to join everybody today. So it should be a lot of fun. So everyone have a good lunch. Have a good afternoon. Thank you everyone for joining. I'll see everyone again.
So thank you everyone. And when you guys get the chance, make a comment, talk about the class, share about the class. It will mean a lot to me. Okay, James. Thank you, you guys. All right. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Hello everyone, it's Teacher Grant coming to you from the wonderful world of Web Talk. Um, the video you're about to see is a video about American pronunciation. It is my take on American pronunciation, on how we speak, how we act, how we say other words. So please don't take everything I'm saying literally. Everybody will have their own way of teaching and I have my own way they'll have their own way. No way is right, no way is wrong. We all have our own way of learning and teaching. Thank you everyone, enjoy the video.